Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Extended Tech Talk uh, with our friends from Device 42. Today, I have with me Jesse Long from Device 42. Jesse, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, as those of you that might be following uh, kind of what Jesse and I have been talking about uh, with the Device 42 platform, um, we have another exciting addition for you here today where we're going to talk about application dependency mapping uh, for cloud migration. Um, Jesse and I had uh, talked a little bit uh, uh, as we kind of rolled into this recording, and uh, Device 42 has a really, really neat set of tools available for cloud migrations. And so, Jesse, I want to kind of turn it over to you, and let's talk a little bit about what uh, uh, Device 42 has in store uh, for folks that are planning a cloud migration. Yeah, so really it's just kind of discovering the devices, discovering kind of what's happening happening in the infrastructure and, and not just, you know, what's talking to what and how often, but it's also how things are performing. And so when you're looking at those resource utilizations kind of tied to um, the communication around that, we're really able to help kind of right size for the cloud or, or right size for any kind of a data move there. So, um, yeah, it's something that we do a lot of and, and you know, our partners with kind of the the cloud providers um, is, is a good little mix into, uh, you know, getting them to where they want to go. Well, and, and, and cloud migrations are so can be so complicated for organizations. You know, one of the things that we've had multiple clients talk to us about is maybe they're using an on-premise version uh, of a product today and they want to migrate to the cloud version. And their first question is, well, what the heck is hooked into this? Because um, they may have integrations to all kinds of different systems. You think about ERP systems and and and, and, and other platforms um, that might be being migrated to to a cloud sort of version. Um, you you in many of those systems you have oodles and oodles of integrations to all kinds of other things, and you know that and that builds up over time. Uh, and so to be able to get get a full picture of really what's involved, really what's where the dependencies are, um, let you have a, a really good uh, plan for migrating to the cloud. So I know you've got some things prepped for us. Um, why don't you want to show us a little bit of how, what the things Device 42 has available um, for this? Yeah, let me bring this up real quick, sorry. Um, so yeah, essentially, um, I guess the, the different components of, of Device 42, are, and I'll share this real quick. Um, so, you know, you have a device. So here's a MySQL server. It just, it, this happens to be a virtual device, but it doesn't really matter if it's virtual, physical. Um, you know, we're looking at kind of how these things are made up, um, you know, operating system information and so on. But the biggest takeaway is where we get into that application dependency is we're looking at that service communication. And we're also looking at that, um, you know, utilization of this device. So we can come in and say, hey, um, here's how much CPU, memory, disk, networking stats. Um, so how much that's actually consuming and then we can also tie that into looking at the topology of this device. So this MySQL server, this database, kind of all the communication that's happening around that. So you can see this MySQL server here. You can see the components it's communicating through. On the right-hand side, you can see how they're communicating. So you can actually see, you know, that, that uh, you know, Java communication, what worker ports, worker IPs Java may be using. Um, so this is kind of one component of it. This is looking at all service communication. Um, you know, this can get a little bit muddied um, or kind of a spaghetti plate. So one thing that we can do is say, hey, let's clean up the noise and just show application relevant data only. Um, so, you know, all of the components that make up that application and, and say, okay, this Apache server is sending information to this Tomcat server, what type of communication? This Tomcat's then sending it to this MySQL server, what type of communication? So that's where we're, you know, we're looking at those communication strings. And we're also looking at how these things are performing to, to really help build this, uh, you know, and get all the way into what we call a business application um, that you can kind of name these things and say what these components are doing and, and um, you know, create, you know, how critical is this? Who's the the ownership of these devices or, or these components? So, um, you know, being able to look at all of that and then move this into, something that we call our cloud recommendation engine um, is, is where we're seeing a lot of, uh, um, you know, being able to move that and kind of the, takes out the unknowns of that migration. Yeah, and, and one of the cool things is, is you start to look at that mapping, as you talked about, you, you can, by looking at, it's what data is going where. So it may be much easier to identify, uh, for example, uh, REST integration points 
uh, right. that may be you know uh, unidirectional or even, even bidirectional in many cases because um, one of the things we we saw with a, a recent effort uh, with a customer that was going through this exact uh, uh, process uh, was there were a number of bidirectional REST integrations. Well, not only do you have to change the integration point for one side, you have to do it for the other as well. Right. Um, how are these things going to be talking to each other? Because um, it changes um, when now the applications move to the cloud where that integration endpoint may be. The integrations can still work the same, um, but that helps you uncover those little hidden gems or or uh, sometimes, as, as, as happened in this case, there were a couple surprise integrations that they didn't yeah. know had been made at one point or another. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one of, a really easy use case is to say, you know, we've had people that have moved things to the cloud, but they forgot about that one script that's running on this one old device and they didn't move that over and it parses the database and they move this, these things over and all of a sudden, you know, their their uh, infrastructure goes down because they've missed a component or, or key components that, uh, you know, that app owner forgot to, to say, hey, that's that's part of that ecosystem. So, yeah, there's a lot of use cases that, you know, us doing auto discovery can see those things without, um, you know, having to actually know what's happening there. Well, and, and you guys are getting down to that that really bits and bytes level. What is, you know, if, if I see a transaction going between two servers, um, you know, I don't have to know that the name of that server happens to be our SQL cluster because I'm seeing traffic on port 1433 going. So I can make, make some educated guesses as well. Um, right. uh, and, 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 and another example in this case was they found that some data was being shuttled by a stored procedure over to another SQL server. That was another gem that they didn't know about. Um, right. and, and, and in, in, in device 42, doing this basic discovery, they were like, holy smokes, okay, we've got a couple of things that we need to, to dig a little into. Like these may have, what they found was like that shuttling of the data, nobody uses it. It was built for a particular purpose long, long ago in a land far, far away. Um, and that's now been, been you know, uh, 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 it's just not something that they need anymore because it was solved by another uh, thing that they did. Uh, but it was right. still, not, you know, got these large amounts of data that are transacting over and you're taking up storage space in the database and uh, you got a database that you don't need um, that may be being maintained or, you know, DBAs may be doing stuff with because it's part of their, their role. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you look at this as a the little microcosm of what device 42 does overall, which is give you that view of what's happening. But you've got that cloud, cloud migration output that we can get as well that will give us uh, uh, some of that data. What's that output look like? Yeah, I can I can show that real quick. So it's essentially, you know, going in and, and we call it our cloud recommendation engine. So, you know, taking the data that you're looking at here and saying, hey, I'm interested in, in what this would look like in AWS, Azure, GCP, whatever it may be. You know, what resource metrics do we care about? You know, is it that, you know, the peaks, the averages? Um, and then basically, what are you trying to see? What what are you trying to look at in the cloud? Is it just that one super critical application? Is it multiple applications? Is it a business application that you created? We send that to the cloud. Um, so we're sending raw data to the cloud or to those, you know, service providers. They are, you know, analyzing it and coming back and kind of showing you an example of what um, a report would look like. But essentially, it's, you know, what device 42 has discovered being, you know, as far as inventory of these devices, um, how we're discovering them being used, so actual resource utilization, and then we get into the actual, you know, recommendations. So, you know, here's a device, for instance, that has eight cores, eight gigs of memory. Um, you know, AWS is recommending this instance size, but only four cores because you're not utilizing all eight cores. So it's really, you know, helping with, you know, making you feel good about, hey, this is right size, this is what I need, not, you know, what I have. Um, if you just do that kind of forklift move, you know, a lot of times things are over provisioned, which is fine when it's local. But when you move it into the cloud and you start, you know, paying their costs, um, you know, that's where it gets more expensive. And and then we can also get into, hey, here's some things that, you know, server 2008 standards, not, not, not something you can move to the cloud. You have to, you know, upgrade that to R2 or whatever it may be. So just being able to get these outputs and it's going to be the same with, with Azure, you know, different instance name. They might recommend something different here. And then the cost as far as monthly, you know, multi-year, whatever that is, the cost is going to be different there as well. So 
wow. So a, a lot of fidelity and visibility into what you're doing. And you make a great point. I think uh, uh, a lot of customers, um, uh, when we moved into the pandemic and they moved certain things to the cloud uh, to, to make the make it easier for the team, um, I know talking to a lot of customers, they were somewhat surprised when they got the bills um, because you are paying for every little bit of everything you do with the cloud provider, you know, data throughput and number of cores and uh, all sorts of other things. Um, and all of a sudden there were some shocking bills. There, there were a lot of great articles that were written about it where I'll give, you know, Microsoft and Amazon all the credit in the world. They work with customers because they realized, hey, you know, folks didn't really understand what was happening. And we've seen now tool sets and other capabilities um, like you're showing become available um, to help folks understand, well, you know, look, here's here's the load this thing is taking. You really don't need to have this in the cloud. Say, of course, you can always add course to it if you find that it's under under load. Um, but, uh, you know, you may have scaled it uh, with your hardware um, because you had, you know, you'd start thinking about companies with large data centers. They had hardware to throw at. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and, I, and another uh, kind of another big component to that is, uh, you know, a lot of times customers ask like, hey, what's in it for AWS? Like, why would AWS recommend a tool like this? Why would Azure? Up? Because a lot of times customers aren't going to the cloud because there's that huge unknown of, you know, I don't want I don't want to overpay and I don't. So they're just sitting there and saying, OK, let's just buy another, you know, uh, uh, compute box or whatever it may be locally. Um, because I don't, you know, I don't, I want to move to the cloud, but I don't know how to get there. So we're kind of giving that vision and, and telling you what that would look like um, in the cloud. So um, it's a pretty good relationship. That's fantastic. You know, uh, leveraging your tools that can, you know, we're, we're populating the CMDB, we're doing all this other great stuff, but we have all these other capabilities that, that sit in a tool that we could already have within our environment uh, that's ready for us to use when we need it. Um, right. Jesse, thank you for sharing those tidbits with us. Um, for, for our folks that are out there, we'd love to show you more about Device 42. Uh, if you're planning a cloud migration, let us show you what Device 42 can do for you um, to uh, help help you get there. And then also, if you're already in the cloud, help you ensure that uh, uh, things are working the way you need them to. Um, Jesse, look forward to our next conversation. All right. Yeah, thanks for having me.